In this video, we are walking through the pathophysiology of myasthenia gravis and the signs and symptoms of it. Now we won't stop there. We are also going to walk through the critical thinking behind it all. So you are not just memorizing information for your nursing school exam, but you will actually know how to critically think through it all. Because let's be real, when was the last time your nursing school exam tested you on memorization? <laughs> Like, never, right? They just don't do that. They're going to test you on how well you apply the information that you're learning and how well you critically think about it. So I'm going to give you the critical thinking points that you need to know so you can learn how to critically think and ace your nursing school exam. And of course, I have a free cheat sheet for you to help you learn things faster in nursing school. So be sure to stay until the end of the video and I will let you know where you can get that. Now hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell and let's dive in. Myasthenia gravis is a neurological condition that prevents muscles from contracting like they should. So when you think of myasthenia gravis, the first thing that should come to your mind is muscle weakness. Now, we don't know exactly what causes myasthenia gravis in the first place, but we do know that it's an autoimmune disorder that triggers the patient's own immune system to attack the connection between the neurons and muscles. Now the neurons and the muscles can't talk to each other and the neurons can't tell the muscles to contract. So when the immune system attacks like this, the muscles aren't able to contract like they should. Now if you remember from this video, we always, always want to make sure that we're critically thinking in nursing school rather than just memorizing things. Because seriously, you just don't get tested on rote memorization in nursing school. You have to to be able to critically think for your exams and in real life. So we're going to walk through the critical thinking around myasthenia gravis following the step-by-step -step process that we teach you and use inside the Nursing SOS membership community. And it starts with the pathophysiology. You have to understand the pathophysiology first before you can understand the other aspects of a disorder, like the signs and symptoms, the nursing assessment for it, and the nursing interventions and treatment for it. Now, if you want to deep dive into the nursing assessment and nursing interventions and treatment for myasthenia gravis, be sure to check those videos out. And as always, we are going to break down the pathophysiology into a simple step-by-step -step process for you to follow. Now, these are not official steps for this or anything. I just put this together this way to help you learn it faster. Now, this is what's happening with the pathophysiology of myasthenia gravis, but they are not official steps that you'll see in a textbook or anything in a nursing lecture. So just so you know. Now, step one of myasthenia gravis is when the patient's own immune system creates antibodies to attack the connection between neurons and muscles. Now, this connection is called the neuromuscular junction or the NMJ. Now, these antibodies are called autoantibodies because they attack the patient's own body. In this case, the autoantibodies are being created to attack that postsynaptic nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. Now, I know that's a big phrase, so let's break it down. The muscles in our body have lots of neurons that help control how those muscles contract and relax. Kind of looks like this. There's a neuron here that releases special chemicals called neurotransmitters. And normally the neuron releases a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine, which then goes and binds to these nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. And this causes the muscles to contract. But in a patient with myasthenia gravis, their immune system has attacked those nicotinic acetylcholine receptors so that that acetylcholine cannot bind to them anymore, which is step number two. Since those antibodies have attacked those receptors, the acetylcholine cannot bind there. And this then prohibits the muscles from contracting, which now is step number three. The muscles can't contract like they should. Now, one of the hallmark signs of myasthenia gravis is the muscle weakness gets worse 
with activity and then improves with rest. Now, weakness tends to worsen with repetitive movements and activity is more and more. Acetylcholine is blocked and then naturally broken down over time. Now with rest though, muscle contractions can improve. Rest will allow more acetylcholine to build up at that neuromuscular junction and allow it to flood more of those receptors. So remember that muscle weakness gets worse with activity activity or throughout the day, and it improves with rest. Now, thankfully, myasthenia gravis can be fairly well controlled with proper treatment. The main concern is when the respiratory muscles are compromised and can't contract like they should, which can lead to respiratory failure. And this brings us to the signs and symptoms of myasthenia gravis. Now, remember, we need to know that pathophysiology first, and then we can better critically think through the signs and symptoms of a disorder. So as we go through these signs, and symptoms, I will also walk you through exactly why they happen and then the critical thinking behind it so you can understand that. So when you think of myasthenia gravis, like we said, the first thing that needs to come to your mind is muscle weakness. Like we said, the patient's immune system is attacking that connection between the neurons and the muscles. So they just cannot talk to each other. So the neurons can't tell the muscles to contract. Now this causes that muscle weakness and the muscles can't function and do their job. Therefore, all of the signs and symptoms of myasthenia gravis are going to be related to that muscle weakness due to that lack of muscle contraction. So here's a list of signs and symptoms, and then we're gonna go through each one and do some critical thinking about it. Now, eye and vision changes like eyelid drooping, strabismus, and double vision. Weakness in the face, the neck, the arms, the legs, the hands. Dysphagia or difficulty eating and swallowing. Gagging and difficulty protecting protecting the airway during meals, slurred speech and hoarseness, tiredness, and progressive weakness throughout the day, like we said, difficulty breathing and respiratory distress, and then possible respiratory failure. So let's dive into why each of these signs and symptoms of myasthenia gravis happens. Now, one of the first signs and symptoms is eyelid drooping because of the constant muscle contractions that have to occur in order for us to move our eyes and blink. Now, when those autoantibodies block those receptors, acetylcholine can't get them to cause the eye muscles to contract. And this can cause droopy eyelids, which is also called ptosis. Now, similar to that, when the muscles that control the eye movements themselves can't contract, it can cause strabismus. Now, this is where one or both of the eyes kind of does its own thing. It might look up or down or in or out, and it can lead to double vision. Now, the eyes would not track appropriately because one would lag behind. Then weakness in the face, the neck, the arms, the legs, the hands may also occur. Now, they might have little facial expression or a very flat affect with drooped facial expressions as well. And then problems swallowing, gagging, difficulty protecting their airway. These things are common because the receptors that control swallowing have autoantibodies on them and that they are blocking that acetylcholine. Now this tends to progress as the day or the meal, if they're eating, as it goes on, and the patient may feel more and more weak and have even more difficulty eating, breathing, or talking. Now therefore, meals in the morning might be better than meals at night for this reason. Reason. Now, a key thing to remember here is that weakness tends to worsen with those repetitive movements and activity as more and more acetylcholine is blocked and then naturally broken down over time. With rest, though, the muscle contractions can improve. Rest will allow more acetylcholine to build up at that neuromuscular junction and allow it to flood more of those receptors. So think muscle weakness over time throughout the day and especially with repetitive movements. So remember that. And it improves with rest. 
Now, slurred speech or a hoarse voice can happen too due to those weakened mus muscles around the mouth that produce speech. Like all of the other symptoms, this tends to get worse as the day goes on and the patient is talking more throughout the day. An overall sense of tiredness, especially at the end of the day, is very common. As the day goes on, acetylcholine is being blocked and then naturally broken down throughout the day. So there's less and less of it, like we said, to bind to any open receptors that aren't blocked. So it makes it harder for muscle contractions to continue. Now, the patient might be exhausted at the end of the day from doing a simple, basic activities of daily living. Now, one of the biggest life-threatening signs of myasthenia gravis is when the respiratory muscles start to become affected. Now, the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors in the respiratory system become blocked with those autoantibodies, so the muscles around the lungs and the diaphragm can't continue uh, to allow the patient to breathe. Now, this can quickly progress to respiratory distress and respiratory failure. So those are the key signs and symptoms that you need to know about for myasthenia gravis for nursing school. Now remember that the hallmark sign of this condition is that muscle weakness gets worse with activity, but gets better with rest. That's the key thing to know here. And all of the signs and symptoms are related to that lack of muscle contraction and muscle weakness. So keep that in mind when you go take your nursing school exam. And remember, when you think of myasthenia gravis, the first thing that should come to your mind is muscle weakness. Like we said, the patient's immune system is attacking the connection between the neurons and the muscles, so they cannot talk to each other as well. So the neurons can't tell the muscles to contract. Now this then causes that muscle weakness. The muscles can't function and do their job. Now make sure to download the free nursing school study checklist that we have for you that walks you through the step-by-step -step study process so you can learn how to study and critically think faster in nursing school. It's also filled with a ton of other great study tips to help you pass. Now the link is down below in the description for you to get that. And if you're struggling with learning med surge in nursing school and all the disorders that you have to know, be sure to check out the step-by-step -step videos we have for you inside the Nursing SOS membership community. You don't need to figure everything out alone anymore, my friend. I am here to hold your hand every step of the way. Now, the link is in the description for you to check out all of the details. And if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment below, and let me know that you loved it. Share it with your friends if they need help with med surge and myasthenia gravis as well. And of course, hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell so you never miss a video. And click on one of these videos right over here so you can keep rocking nursing school. And as always, my friend, go become the nurse that God created only you to be. And I'll catch you next time on the nursing school show. Take care. Bye-bye.